Viewer discretion is advised. There's a common misconception about the Grand Theft Auto radio experience. While everyone attributes the title of the best to Vice City, which justifiably earned its place in the conversation, I'd argue that Vice City has the best or at least the most nostalgic music. Tony here, feeling fine, going double time, that's my rhyme. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but when you go west, you gotta call me. Now, if you want the overall best written and produced radio that integrates seamlessly with the game world while moving the story forward, the credit would have to go to San Andreas. Hands down, it's not even a question. And so I'm ready to fight anyone who disagrees. I mentioned in my previous video that I can easily go off on a 10 minute tangent about this topic. So here we are going well over 10. For this one though, I promise you, you don't need to be a gamer to appreciate this video. You just need to have a good sense of humor and an appreciation for good writing. So back that hand away from the device. I see you trying to click off. The game had 11 radio stations, which cut across a bunch of popular genres. And if you ask around, every station is someone's favorite station. They included radio Los Santos and Playback FM that played hip hop and rap, Bounce FM that played funk, dance and disco, and I think that was Sweet's favorite station because it was always playing in his car, Master Sounds which played funk and soul, CSR which stands for Contemporary Soul Radio, Keja West which was dub and reggae, K Rose which played country music, K Dust and Radio X which played different categories of rock. SFUR, which was San Fierro Underground Radio and played house music with a really quirky host. I'm Hans. That's about it, really. Shut up and dance, you fools. And WCTR, which was West Coast Talk Radio. Did I get them all? I hope I got all of them because I hate listing things. But if I'm being completely honest, I primarily listened to 7 of the 11. But even amongst the stations I tuned into, that's already a whole lot of music. But if I decided today to give a chance to the remaining 4 which never got much of my attention before, I'd still discover great new music after 20 years of playing this game. Because great song selection has always been a staple of GTA games, including the games that did not quite hit for me. The stations and music were not just created haphazardly. They were perfectly selected and curated to fit the map and the types of people who populated said map. It was easy to guess where the different stations would be played the most while traversing the open world. But I don't plan on talking about the music selection so much as I want to focus on the brilliance behind the radio's contribution to immersion in San Andreas State. The stations all had a distinct vibe that celebrated the 90s era and the presenters, callers and even the commercials all contributed seamlessly to capturing one specific moment in time. When people refer to the absurdity of GTA satire, which it is very well known for, the radio hosts tend to be the maestros conducting a symphony of quick-witted cultural commentary that sticks with the players every single time without fail. Officials say there are still no reported casualties, which is truly unfortunate as it makes for incredibly boring news. And like I said in my previous video, Rockstar peaked with San Andreas in almost every way. But to step out of the radio for a second, when CJ is on idle mode in the game, he sings songs from the radio to himself and adds his own humorous flavor to them. Never gonna get it, never gonna get it, yach. Express yourself. It was said that whichever station he listened to more prominently would influence the songs that he sang while in idle mode. Warm it up, Kane. Warm it up, CJ. Warm it up, Kane. Yo, you dropped the bomb on me. Do low down, niggas going crazy. This game is just so stupidly good. And while the music presenters and DJs all made reference to the events of the game, like the reason why different sections of the map were closed at the beginning and subsequent points during the game. We should have all just died in that earthquake because now you can't go between Los Santos and Red County and they have no idea when it's going to open, which sucks because I met this really amazing guy over there. The aftermath of the devastating earthquake continues. Travel is still severely restricted statewide. Or several game mission outcomes that made their way to the news. A district attorney is facing a long jail sentence after he was arrested outside the Van Gogh Hotel trying to escape with well over a ton of marijuana. Police are currently investigating claims it was for personal use. Staying with pot. Police are celebrating the destruction of a major hall of marijuana in Flint County recently. Unfortunately, the huge fire caused problems for local wildlife, much of which was found eating chocolate, listening to the same band over and over, and buying fractal artwork. Richard Burns is on the scene. 
Great to hear about that weed farm going up in smoke. Just wish I'd been in the neighborhood with a good pair of lungs. Radio X, it's Sage, and did you hear about all that pot that got burned down the other day? Oh, man, I might have to go back on the hard stuff again soon. Radio Los Santos is Julio G. I'm going to tell you something else I'm hearing off the street. Grove Street family, they're on their way back up in a big way. They took over the whole neighborhood, and now they're cleaning the whole shit up. They ain't playing, man. I'm really glad to hear that. Keep that shit off my street. That's what I want to say. Or the diverse weather patterns, one of my favorite things. There's a fog warning in effect. I've been told by the PD that I have to say that. Just beware on the drive home. I just hope you're enjoying the sunshine the manly way by nursing a vicious hangover and wearing dark glasses. You're on the dust. Great news. It's going to be a beautiful day to be outside. It's going to rain. It's a perfect day to wear plenty of mascara and just mope about in the rain. Are the rock stations taking consistent shots at other music genres? They were the only station to play Boston. That's because this new rap crap is killing music. We seem to have a big rap crisis. It's not really a crisis, just for me, it's a crisis. First it was that guy Doggy Mad, and now it's Og Loke. Who wants to be a gangster anyway? There's too much work involved. I mean, I just want to sit around all day and stare at candles. None of that rap crap. Word. I got a word for you, homie. Dust. All very immersive elements, but speaking just from a production standpoint, and these are some of the reasons why I believe the development process for this game was so arduous for the devs. There was a lot of drama about crunch at the time, but every station, commercial, or color dialogue had really high quality writing, jingles, lots of humor, and era-specific commentary that was extremely cohesive there was the highest level of attention to detail. The clarity of the creative vision with the game was extremely evident, which is something I've talked about in many previous videos. I love it when a creative has a clear vision. Because the hour's worth of talking content on the radio was all very seamless, despite the vast array of different topics, genres, situations, and concepts, there is nothing better for me in creative work than visionary leadership. The decision they made was to go for absurd but dry, intelligent, and witty humor with a tiny hint of slapstick which cut across all the scripts. I'm your host, Christy McIntyre. Let's go to the phones. Hi, Christy. My wife and I love your show. It's really helped. Aw, oh, thanks. Do you want to tell us about it? Uh, no. Okay. I can't believe you actually recommended we go to Barbados on our honeymoon. It was revolting. There were poor people. I live in Vinewood to be away from poor people. Barbados is lovely. Look, I want to be very clear. I'm not racist. Just careful. Well, that sounds lovely. With people like you, it's no wonder we don't bother curing cancer. Boom. Roasted. So within the West Coast talk radio station that I mentioned earlier, they broke it down to seven main segments. So here's another list again. They had the tight end zone with Derek Thackeray who discussed sports. Should we uh, start with the national anthem? Uh, yeah, yeah, screw it. Yeah, I got I got too drunk last night. Just uh, play the opening music. Entertaining America, which I will get to later. This week on Entertaining America, Richard Goblin, one man's triumphant return to cock. Gardening with Maurice, which was about uh, gardening with Maurice. Why don't you just go buy your vegetables at the grocery store then, you sycophant? God, I just don't understand people. You go to hell. Well, screw you too, Mom. See if you're ever on the show again. <laughs> Lonely Hearts, which I'll also get to later. You're on Lonely Hearts on WCTR, West Coast Talk Radio. Or as I like to call it, we can't talk right. I Say You Say, which was hosted by a married couple who are Democrat and Republican and spent their shows bickering about their opposing political views. And this is I Say You Say, where left is right and right is wrong. That's the problem with liberals. They don't know when to shut up and enjoy freedom. Let's go to the phones. Area 53, which is all about conspiracy theories. On the conspiracy line, caller, you're an Area 53. Do not use fluoride. It's evil. It made me kill my doctor. Why would we worry about a chemical that the government puts into the water. Animals can now be trained to fly, including several species of bird. Think about the military applications. Uh, future Mel here. I forgot one show, which is The Wild Traveler. It's about a guy who travels around the world and should be on an FBI watch list. And according to the dialogue, he pretty much is. 
Has someone been stealing pages out of my journal? My producer is jealous. He keeps stealing my stuff and lending it to people. Just last week I heard him saying government agents wanted to look at it. What a load of trash. And last but certainly not least, the news with Leon Forget, which is spelled forget, and field reporter Richard Burns. Staying in Venturus. It used to be a patch of desert, then it was a mob town. Now it's the corporate headquarters of America. Richard explains from the streets. That's right, Leanne. It used to be a patch of desert. Then it was a mob town. Now it is the corporate headquarters of America. Back to you in the studio. I'll also say more about the news later, but every single one of these shows had hosts with very strong points of view. Like Dave Chappelle once said, As a comedian, you don't always have to be funny, but you must be interesting. You have to say something compelling that people want to hear, and there's abundant evidence out there in the real world that the unwavering people with the strongest opinions will almost always shoot to the top fastest, either through fame or infamy. My problem with the newer GTA games is that they push the comedic absurdity to a point of self-referential parody, therefore losing the effectiveness of the earlier games. As you have already probably ascertained by now, your host, Dr. Ray D'Angelo Harris, have we armed yet, Cheryl? Have we armed? Yes. You heard me go? Um, yes. SHUT UP! And I love JB Smoove in saying all that, but San Andres took a different approach that was less try-hard and more social commentary. My name's Cheryl D calling from Casa City. This is such a great country. Why would you go anywhere else? It's unpatriotic to travel. The curation of shows on the WCTR station, along with the selection of appropriate hosts, managed to ground all the ridiculous shows in reality. They said the most absurd things at times, but they were extremely confident in giving farcical takes on mature topics, which are not so far-fetched anymore. Want to be too scared to go outside? The news is next. Leanne Forget, WCTR State Controlled News. Pravda, breaking news. Today's top stories. Why hatred is good for you. Foreigners, worse than we thought. Leanne Forget, WCTR News. Unfair and skewed for you. A government official released this statement. Hey, if they want to kill each other, let them. It's great. It means your taxes go down. I'm Leanne Forget, WCTR News. Stay indoors. People don't have a right to cheap transport. The Constitution is very clear on this. Remember, it's only a small step from mass transit to communism. Proposition 602. Vote yes. It's all about you. It was satire then, but it feels like reality today. The world is currently better in some ways, but worse in so many other ways. You're not imagining things, I promise you. And when you listen to San Andreas Radio now, a lot of this is quite relatable, unfortunately. Instead of complaining about being poor, lady, enjoy it. Mike, I can't feed my kids, and the rent's due. Whoa, bitch, settle it down. Are you saying this ain't the greatest country in the world? Wait, hold on, hold on, wait, everyone. USA, USA, USA. Leanne Forget, WCTR News, reporting what the morning memo tells us to. Pornography in preschool, a sickening shortage. A psychotic underground power-hungry cult running the government and Vinewood. Or an idea whose time has come. I'm Leanne Forget, WCTR News. We distort, you can't retort. The way the host said questionable things in a matter-of-fact way shaped how we all perceived San Andres. It was populated by absolute lunatics in the best possible way. When the hosts would take calls from listeners, they would swap between the straight man and the buffoon where appropriate, so someone always took things seriously when they were having conversations, which should have anyone committed to an asylum if they were involved in such exchanges. Yeah, it's funny. You go on and on about other countries, but you live here. America rules you, commie. Eat me. Well, we've been trying. It was not campy or overly slapstick and had very profound takes on serious topics that sound silly and funny on the surface, but if you thought about them a little more for just two seconds, the social commentary would leap out at you. Yeah, uh, I agree with that caller about the nuclear plant next to the projects. You know, nature has a way of taking care of poor people. Tornadoes don't like poor people. They also asked real questions in between the foolishness. 
Today on the show, is it okay to talk to people we were at war with once? And the skyrocketing price of buying off a politician. Which is the mark of really good satire. They were also experts at theater of the mind, assisted by the amazing gaming world that I mentioned in my previous video. Most conversations referenced very specific places on the map, which in turn made the game world feel even more real than it already did. From the fires in Los Santos to the desert in Bone County, it's ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. It's another glorious San Andreas day. Scarcely surprising given we're living in a desert. Even the palm trees are fake people. I'll tell you what's irrelevant. That ridiculous photography you have on exhibit in San Fierro. That shit sucks. Hey. And government officials denied the existence of an area of Bone County that isn't on the map. Someone who was unprepared to be named said, the so-called place that isn't called anything doesn't exist. And if it did, we'd name it something. I'm on a cliff. How romantic. I want to jump. I know what you mean, jump into the unknown. How can it be a sin if it feels good? Anyway, what's your question? Why am I here? I don't know. Why are you there? Where are you? Kenya? No. I'm in Verdant Bluffs. Loathsome place. I'd jump if I were you. I want to go to hell. Me too. Buy a refrigerator magnet when you get there. Good morning. San Fierro and the whole state. We are still going strong. I love you, San Fierro. I love you very much. Hug me. Well, I mean, this is Vinewood. We're all supposed to be, like, psychotic and dog-eat-dog dog and, you know, bang your best friend's wife. I heard some new casino was just opened in Venturis. How is that news? I mean, is it like we think that's culture? I, I live here in Bone County, and I can't get nothing to grow. Have you had any children? I sure do. I got seven kids, and some of them's got the same daddy. Well, look, you've grown something. Little miniature idiots that look like you. Move out of the desert, you moron. I guess you're right. Well, thanks, Maurice. I am right, and I'm Maurice on Gardening with Maurice. Brian from Las Venturas. Hey, dude, my name's Brian. I'm calling from Las Venturas. I want to talk about my heart. Why do men just repeat back what you say and never listen? Are you brain dead, Brian? And when everything is one way, even with humor, the absurdity of the comedy can easily get predictable. It's very much about balance and pacing because you can't keep beating the audience over the head with joke after joke like a bad superhero movie. I'm such a dick. It's never too late to stop being a dick. So some of the callers on the radio were just regular people with regular questions and opinions that received regular responses from the hosts. Also, I was thinking of visiting Colombia. Do you have any recommendations? Oh, yes. Fantastic forms of recreation to be had in Colombia. It's a blizzard of excitement. And cheap. How's the food? Well, a lighter is the most you need to cook up food. But there's scarcely time to eat, my boy. You'll meet fascinating people, feel so comfortable, you'll rip your clothes off and how? for days next caller it helped to keep everything in perspective and provide a much needed tether to reality which highlighted the contrast between a normal society and the asylum that a lot of these characters should have been committed to and how about those commercials hello uh hey it's me jonathan i i don't know a jonathan yeah that's the name they gave me at the orphanage after you put me up for adoption how could you give me away bring the family together again san andreas telephone for those Difficult conversations. Brought to you by Eris Pump Up Shoes. Because women love a winner, and winners wear shoes. Hello? Lisa? Yeah? How you doing, bitch? How do you like living in that house we built together, huh? Do our kids like watching that bald bastard of a new husband kiss you in the morning? They want their real father, Lisa! When you just can't be there in person. San Andreas Telephone, for those difficult conversations. There's not much else to say other than the fact that they were excellent. And much like the music and shows, you could tell where the target audience for the commercials lived on the map. Clocking Bell, for example, sounded like it was directly targeted at the rural population in the countryside. cock a doodle do we're a huge corporation. cock a doodle do and we can't be stopped. All you protesters can go to hell It's time for a clucking bell The chicken is a bird with a tiny brain So we assume he doesn't feel any pain The pump full of chemicals, what the hell? Six wings, forty breasts, and then they're gas Cock-a-doodle-doo, we're psychotic crazies 
cock a doodle do factory farming's insane. We denied it all before our stock price fell. Come down to the Clucking Bell. Clucking Bell! If you enjoy it, the chicken didn't die in vain. I just have to say, the lyrics of those Clocking Bell commercials, as catchy as they were, contained a very depressing reality of corporate greed that is super pervasive in our regular lives. Hearing a mega corporation dismiss protesters and sing about their crimes to a catchy jingle could not be more relevant today if they had a time machine to glimpse at the future. So now I want to get to the main reason for this video, which is hilarious because how long have you been listening to this if you're still here? And I promise I'm editing myself heavily because there is so much I've cut out already. So I mentioned in my previous video that the radio also progressed the game's story in several subtle ways. Let's get into that. The radio shows on WCTR had at least three episodes per show, but the news went up to 11 unique reports, which was significant in a few ways. The first and the main reason was that it denoted passage of time, both in making informative and entertaining references to the main story, and having separate arcs that were exclusive to and only affected events on the radio shows. Let me break that down with a couple of quick examples. So fan favorite Laszlo Jones is introduced in the game as a caller who calls in to the I Say You Say show. The show was soliciting for relevant questions from the audience, but Laszlo trying to get a spot on the radio called in and referenced his jobs in past GTA games. Uh, yeah, hi. Here's the deal. I'm really funny, but nobody wants to hire somebody funny. I, I mean, how is that fair? I, I mean, I'm white, middle class, very erudite. Um, you know, whatever that means. But people just respond badly to me. I, I don't understand it. Are you related to my husband? <laughs> uh, I, I don't think so. I hope not. Have you got a question about politics? Yeah, sure. I know a lot about politics. Hey, can I do your job? You know, I used to be on the radio back in the day. Even my husband can't do his job, you strange, pathetic little sap. Let's have a real caller, please. A separate but related story then starts on the Entertaining America show, where the host named Billy Dexter is interviewing an action star called Jack Howitzer, who is a parody of Sylvester Stallone's Rambo. Stack the decks in which I, Billy Dexter, meet the entertainers in the news. Kiflam. Jack Howitzer, once the biggest star in America, but the last three years have been unkind. People describe him as a dinosaur, an action hero relic from the 80s, a muscle-bound Neanderthal, and my favorite, the most stupid gorilla in the jungle. Jack, welcome to the show. Kiflam. <laughs> Good to be here, Dex. Pleasure. In the course of the interview, Jack ends up accidentally shooting Billy Dexter live on air and the show ends. I, I crap myself. <laughs> Take it easy. It's not even loaded. Oh, oh, Dex. Oh, shit. Oh, well, I guess it was. Oh, okay, Billy, don't get around. Get up, boy. Get up, come on. Damn it, his brain is leaking. Help! Oh, there's only one thing to do. I gotta defend freedom. No time to cry. Only time to die. Welcome to the land of freedom, bitches! That was Entertaining America, showing you why America is so respected culturally across the world. When the show returns later on in the second episode, it now has a new host in Laszlo Jones, who is finally back on air. The most boring show with a brand new host, Entertaining America with Laszlo. Welcome to Entertaining America. This is Laszlo. <laughs> I gotta say it, pardon me, but... Uh... Don't call it a comeback. I I've been here for years. <laughs> Just unemployed. But I'm back. Running the media. Gotta love this West Coast vibe. This was far more interesting than just throwing Laszlo in as a host from the beginning, and it really added to his personality as a voice-only character in the game. You got to know so much about him without even seeing him. Which is more than I can say for GTA 5, let's just be honest. But his one-liners and the interviews were also really, really funny and brought a very different vibe from the previous host who got killed. He managed to interview OG Loke and a cult leader from the Epsilon program, which is a whole story in and of itself. Then just do it. Just do it. It's so easy. Join the Epsilon group. Ugh. Chris, stop trying to recruit people. I mean, you even say you just make this stuff up. Let's go to the phones. Hi, La Laszlo? Ah, oh, Darius Fontaine. Look, I told you to leave me alone. Look, look, it was... 
was an unfortunate incident that happened to your mother, but I was quite clear. Grandmother, not mother. It's your fault it doesn't work. I nearly went to prison, man. What you told me to do is illegal in most states. Whatever. Look, Chris Formage is a liar and a cheat. He made it up. It doesn't help anyone apart from him. The fact is people need to face their fears. Remember, I always say that. Face your fears. Don't run away. Darius Fontaine can kiss my ass. Oh, you'd, you'd like that? Would, would you like that? I don't think so. Much, much later in the game, the news catches up with the actor Jack Howitzer, who is now facing trial for the murder of Billy Dexter, the guy he killed on air. Disgraced movie star Jack Howitzer broke his silence recently following his on-air murder of radio host Billy Dexter. Facing trial and a possible death sentence, Howitzer spoke to Richard. WCTR would like to be clear. We did pay for this interview. That's right, Leanne. I am Richard Burns here in Los Santos Prison. As we all know, since politicians stopped musicians from coming here to sing songs about shooting your woman on drugs, everyone is now questioning their sexuality. Jack Howitzer, you're facing a death sentence. How do you feel about that? I broke out of a POW camp in Korea, all right? So I'll be out of here soon. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that was a movie and it wasn't real. Oh, no, it was real. I'm a veteran of over 40 films. They didn't have to do any of this really, but going the extra mile like this separates San Andreas from all the other GTA games. Another show which had an interesting transition like Entertaining America was Lonely Hearts, which was hosted by Chrissy McIntyre. She was really funny already, but somewhere along the way came another well-known GTA radio staple host in Fernando Martinez, who tried to steal the show from her, which created another interesting mini-narrative. Life is not a game. Life is love. First caller. Jess, remember me? I told you, leave me alone! Sometimes the heart is confusing, lady. So is the brain. You talk too much. If you look out the window, <laughs> you will notice your car is on fire. Oh my god! Fernando is back. Women know nothing about love. Ellas no saben nada. This is why I am here. Fernando grows tired of hearing women on the radio with bad advice. The other shows didn't have such progression with the hosts, but they were incredibly entertaining in their own right. Gardening with Maurice, for example, had callers from all over San Andreas, which... Going back to what I said earlier, further cemented the idea that San Andreas was an actual place with actual people who lived in different areas of the map. Hello, Mike from Prickle Pine in Los Venturas. Hey, Maurice, first time caller. My name's Mike. And Maurice was hilarious. It's the menopause, Maurice. I'm having hot flashes, okay? Taking a pause from men, huh? You know, I should try that. And the focus on farming was also very fitting for a game with such a large rural landscape. Each show, like I said before, was very relevant to the map. Area 53, for example, was straight out of the desert, and that made sense, because a lot of the main story events in that section of the map would definitely lead to conspiracy theories from the public. Line 18. Hello. Okay, man. I warned you. I've been over to the other side. What are you talking about, buddy? I've been inside. Inside everything. Seen everything. Remember the first time you did mushrooms? There are aliens living in the state. Aliens. And I've held them in my own hand. Everybody, go to the desert. Beg their forgiveness. The tight end zone was also really, really funny. I first heard it in San Fierro, so I always associated it with that city. The host snorted powder before the show and would turn into a raving lunatic. Welcome back to the tight end zone! Now it's time for something really important. Fat men talking about games they don't really understand, played by people they don't know. But he and his callers also had a very tenuous grasp of sports, which made for the funniest commentary. Here's what I say, man. If you want to be number one, you gotta go for first Place. I know, I know. Hey, I mean, uh, you know, it's great stating the obvious, but once you get paid for it, things get really complicated. Man, I was at their training camp this spring, and the mood in the locker room, dude, guys were getting changed, man. I mean, they were really getting prepared. Shoes were going on, feet, shirts were going on, the shirt part of their body, serious faces on them, and you could tell that they were going to play this game. Bottom line is, if they don't score more points than the other team, they can't win! Yeah, man. God, you have some spooky insights into sports, dude. I love your show, man. I, I love you. 
<laughs> yeah, look, great talking to you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, that's really perceptive stuff. Actually, it reminded me of a show I used to watch back in the day called Hoyt and Andy. I don't know if you saw it. I think it was called Hoyt and Andy Sports Bender or something. Hmm. I need to go back and watch that. That was another very 90s show. Anyway. The news with Leanne Forget and Richard Burns was also hysterical. Richard Burns was just a straight up criminal and an addict. There is no limit to the number of crimes he committed while reporting the news, but some of the situations he found himself in would leave me on the floor laughing. One officer told me his amazing true life story of how he infiltrated a drug ring and how cool it was to get paid to get high. Yeah, I was undercover smoking crack every day. You know, just to be one of them. I even took my wife undercover and made her a crack whore. Say hello to the newsman, bitch. Hey, don't I know you? The rusty trombone, right? <laughs> I doubt it, Tramp. You're crazy. Back to you, Leanne. It was very cool how they reported on every major event in the game. Leanne Forge, WCTR News. Reporting what makes the administration happy. Police are struggling to solve the mystery of a container ship found deserted and full of bodies. The FBI is investigating. Government officials are denying any knowledge of black helicopters that were recently seen flying over the state. Black helicopters? Uh, what black helicopters? That clears it up. On the story side of things, but still related to the radio, Mad Dog was referenced multiple times through his journey. The game starts where he was a massive celebrity at the top of his game and bragging about it on the news. In Vinewood News, rapper Mad Dog was celebrating the launch of his new clothing line. Richard caught up with him. The thing about Mad Dog is... Think about becoming a superstar. I mean, you know, I've done everything I could do in the rap game. I want shit hands down. Nobody can handle me, you know? Lifetime champ, no shit. Can I say shit? Oh, hey man, it's cool. That's cool. Okay, no shit! But two news reports later, they announced that his manager was murdered, which is a mission that CJ performs at OG Loke's request. Our top story. Alan Crawford, manager of the rapper Mad Dog, murdered. Mad Dog recently launched a clothing label and compared himself favorably to Jesus and Gandhi while sniffing a lot. The brutal murder remains unsolved. Police suspect foul play. Richard Burns is at the scene. The sixth news report starts to reveal that things are not going so well for him anymore and his missing shows in Las Venturas, which coincided with the mission where he wanted to jump off a building and CJ saved him. And where is Mad Dog, Wonder Record execs? The rapper has battled alcoholism and egomania for many years and recently missed a concert in Las Venturas. During the final news report at the end of the game, they referenced the Las Venturas incident, which Mad Dog denied, and announced that he's back on top with CJ as his new manager, which is interesting and full circle considering CJ was the reason for his downfall in the first place. And in entertainment news, the comeback of the year, disgraced drunkard Mad Dog, who was recently saved from jumping to his death by a mystery assistant is on top of the charts with a new album and a sellout tour planned. Yes, people, the wait is over. Mad Dog is back on the top where I belong, baby. Number one. Now I want to set the record straight at this point. I've been hearing all kinds of shit like I was drunk and I was on some drugs and I had a breakdown or some shit. I was never in a hotel in Las Venturas. That's bullshit. They just hating on the player, man. They been hating on me since I was in baby shoes. I got a new manager. His name is Carl Johnson. And we gonna take this rap game to a new level by storm. And all the 11 news reports were timed with the game progression. So you'd always hear them at the appropriate time during the story. If you decided to turn off the radio at the beginning and you never heard any of this, the story is still complete through the missions. But the radio enriched them so much more. And staying with the entertainers, OG Loke was also referenced multiple times on the radio. His interview on Entertaining America with Laszlo is a classic, and I see it referenced all the time, all over social media. I'm here with a man who gets paid to talk for a living. That's incredible. What a concept. Um, he's called a rapper. Oglock, how are you? Oglock! It's OG Loke. OG Loke. You hear me, player? Yes, of course. I hear you. You're only a few feet away, man. Just brilliant writing and perfect comedic timing. But I always try to imagine what CJ could have been thinking when he heard that loser that he tried to help now speaking on the radio like some big shot. Actually, to that point, when Big Smoke betrayed the Grove Street families and CJ was out in the middle of nowhere, around that time I was always wondering what happened to him after we left Los Santos, because Tenpenny made it clear that he was protecting him. 
Now you stay the fuck away from smoke and stay the fuck away from us. Well, that answer came on the radio with Big Smoke announcing his philanthropic efforts and the fact that he was now OG Loke's manager. A lot of people say gangster rap is misogynistic posturing by fake ass idiots who spend more time in drama school than they ever did pimping or hustling dope. Well, I assure you, OG Loke is the real thing. He's hated women all his life. He sold drugs to school children. He's murdered innocent people just for kicks. But he rhymes like an angel. And I assure you, it's all in a good cause. So either way, you can feel good about yourself listening to this music. Well, that was very informative. Big Smoke is doing a lot for the community, or, or to it. He sounds like a great guy. I say it a lot with this game, but it was brilliant how they showed that several other events of the game continued to move forward, completely independent of CJ's journey through the story, just like it happens in the real world. Not everything and everyone revolved around CJ. He was just a small piece of this big world's events. That is freaking world building. Other characters that CJ interacted with also made calls into different radio shows, and it was always either humorous or enlightening. Jizzy B, rest in peace Charlie Murphy, who ran the Pleasure Dome in San Fierro, once called the Lonely Hearts show to promote his pimp operations, which was a really funny and unexpected call to listen to. I'm in the business of keeping people with company. You know what I'm saying? People who got low self-esteem and they need to pick me up, they need to come down to the Pleasure Dome, hang out with me, Jizzy and my girls, you know what I'm saying? They gonna keep your company, have you feeling good. And this goes for everybody. I don't care who you are, how old you are. So come on down and hang out with me if you're lonely. And I'm gonna tell you something. You won't be lonely from the moment you walk in the door because somebody's gonna grab your hand and it's gonna be all about to get there from there. Good grief! That's not the way Lonely Hearts works at all! Zero, who is the character CJ meets in San Fierro, also called the same show, but with a different problem, which, now that I think about it, Jizzy B might have been able to help him with. My name is Zero. I'm a first-time caller, and uh, uh, to the show, I've used the telephone before, but I am having real trouble with women. I, I don't know any... Yes, I don't know any. Well, we all go through lean spells, you know. After a drought, you'll sell for anything that drops out of the sky, especially illegal immigrants stowed away in the landing gear. So exotic. Well, this is quite a winter. Do you understand what I'm saying? Try, try a nuclear winter. I've never even been near a woman close enough to grab... I don't know what to say. Well, that's odd, considering you give advice. I don't think I can help. Look, I'm just being honest here. I wouldn't even subject you to a hooker. The thing I liked about Zero's call was that it showed a different side of the character which you wouldn't have seen during the story missions. It's like that friend of yours who is one way when you're around him, then later on you hear him talking to a girl and you suddenly see a side of him that you never would have seen otherwise. It actually felt a little intrusive, I'll not lie, and it made me look at him different, but what a way to flesh out a character and give them more dimension. Kent, Paul, and Macker were also given a spot on the news that introduced them to the game as celebrities, which later factored into CJ and Mad Dog's events in the game. Lock up your doors and get the drugs in. Manchester's in the area. Again, if you ever need a lesson in proper world building, GTA San Andreas is a great template. Probably the best you can find. Check it out. We got a shout out from Denise and Gen for her man. Give her a call. She says she misses you, and she said desperate. That's the word she used. She said she's desperate, man. What is this, man? This ain't Lonely Hearts. This is Radio Los Santos. It's all good, though. We're going to keep it moving. You know what? I've decided I cannot do that big GTA San Andreas video anymore. There is just too much to cover, even with all the self-editing I'm doing. The game needs a whole dedicated GTA channel to just get through everything that was good in the game, and that can run the channel for years. Maybe I'll eventually do that so the pressure is a lot less when I make a video, but we'll see. But this being my second GTA San Andreas video, go watch the first one if you haven't and also let me know your favorite radio stations, radio shows, hosts, or color interactions in this game. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Peace. Uh, do you have a question? Sort of. Hey, you know, I got the same name as you. Yeah, Peyton. Oh, well, it's a family name. No, it's... Mary. I was called Bruce by my parents, but I prefer Mary. It's much more... Yeah, feminine. No, biblical, which 
like, okay, I'm an atheist, but I love the Bible. I have a hundred that I took from hotel rooms. Well, what's your question? <laughs> well, as a mother and a fireman, I was wondering what you guys thought about diversity in America. It makes me very nervous. Well, you see, I'm heavily into diversity. I'm like a, a man with a womb, lactating. Yes, I think you're a little confused. No, you're the one that's confused. I'm the one who eats Alaskan salmon and children from Alabama. I speak English, I eat German food, I practice French adultery, and I weigh as much as Vatican City. I'm an American. Okay, you're a nut. Get off our show. <laughs>